From simple to complex, navigating sampling methods in research. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this fascinating video about sampling methods in research. You might be wondering, what do sampling methods have to do with research, and why should I care? Well, let me tell you, sampling is a crucial aspect of any research study, and selecting the right sampling method can make or break your research findings. Imagine if you were conducting a study on the effects of a new drug, and you only selected participants who were already healthy. Your findings would be completely biased and unreliable. In this video, we will explore the different types of sampling methods, their benefits and drawbacks, and the application of each method. You'll learn how to choose the right sampling method for your research study and increase the reliability and validity of your findings. So, let's dive into the world of sampling methods and explore how researchers choose the right ingredients to make their research studies successful. What are sampling methods in research? In research, sampling refers to the process of selecting a representative group of participants from a larger population. The goal of sampling is to ensure that the participants in the study are diverse enough to provide valid and reliable results. Sampling methods are used to select participants for the study. Types of sampling methods There are two types of sampling methods, probability sampling and non-probability sampling. Probability sampling Probability sampling involves the selection of participants randomly from the population, and each member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. There are four types of probability sampling methods. Simple random sampling Simple random sampling In this method, each member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. It is the most basic form of sampling, and it can be done with or without replacement. Benefits Simple random sampling is easy to understand and implement, and it can provide unbiased results if the sample is large enough. Drawbacks It can be time-consuming and expensive to implement if the population is large, and there is a risk of under- or over-representation of certain groups within the population. Application Simple random sampling is often used in market research, opinion polls, and medical research. Example, a survey researcher selects 100 people at random from a list of 1,000 subscribers to a magazine to gauge their satisfaction with the publication. Stratified random sampling Stratified random sampling involves dividing the population into subgroups and then randomly selecting participants from each subgroup. The subgroups are based on specific characteristics such as age, gender, or ethnicity. Benefits It ensures that each subgroup is adequately represented. Drawbacks It can be time-consuming and expensive. Application It can be used when the population is heterogeneous. Systematic sampling Systematic sampling involves selecting participants from a population at regular intervals. For example, every tenth person is selected from a population. Benefits Systematic sampling is easy to implement and can provide a representative sample if the sequence is random and the sample size is appropriate. Drawbacks There is a risk of sampling bias if the sequence is not random or if there are periodic patterns in the population. Application Systematic sampling is often used in manufacturing and quality control to test a subset of a product line. Example, a researcher selects every tenth patient who visits a hospital for a survey on healthcare satisfaction. Cluster sampling Cluster sampling involves dividing the population into clusters and then randomly selecting clusters to participate in the study. For example, selecting a random school from a list of schools in a city. Benefits It is more practical than other probability sampling methods. 
Drawbacks. It may lead to biased results if the clusters are not representative of the population. Application. It can be used for populations that are geographically dispersed. Non-probability sampling. Non-probability sampling involves selecting participants from a population in a non-random way. There are five types of non-probability sampling methods. Convenient sampling. Convenient sampling involves selecting participants who are readily available and willing to participate in the study. For example, selecting students from a particular class. Benefits, it is easy and convenient. Drawbacks, it may not be representative of the population. Application, it can be used for exploratory studies. Snowball sampling. Snowball sampling involves selecting participants based on referrals from other participants. For example, selecting participants for a study on drug use by asking drug users to refer their friends. Benefits. It is useful for hard-to-reach populations. Drawbacks. It may lead to biased results. Application. It can be used for populations that are difficult to access. Quota sampling. Quota sampling involves selecting participants based on predetermined quotas. For example, selecting a specific number of males and females or a certain number of participants from different age groups. Benefits. It is more practical than probability sampling methods. Drawbacks. It may lead to bias if the quotas are not representative of the population. Application. It can be used when the researcher has limited time and resources. Purposive sampling. Purposive sampling involves selecting participants based on specific criteria. For example, selecting participants who have a particular disease for a medical study. Benefits. It is useful for studies that require specific participants. Drawbacks. It may lead to biased results. Application. It can be used for studies that require a specific population. Judgmental sampling. Judgmental sampling is a non-probability sampling technique where the researcher selects a sample based on their personal judgment or expertise. Benefits. This method can help ensure that the sample is representative of the population, as the researcher can use their expertise to identify participants who are most likely to be representative. Drawbacks. Judgmental sampling is subjective and can be influenced by the researcher's personal bias, leading to results that are not representative of the population. Applications. Judgmental sampling is often used in qualitative research studies, where the researcher is interested in exploring the opinions and experiences of specific individuals. Examples. A researcher may use judgmental sampling to select key informants for a study on health policy, based on their expertise and knowledge of the policy area. Comparison of sampling methods. All sampling methods have their benefits and drawbacks. Probability sampling methods are generally considered to be more representative of the population, while non-probability sampling methods are more practical and convenient. The choice of sampling method depends on the research design, the resources available, and the characteristics of the population being studied. Conclusion In conclusion, sampling is an essential component of any research design, and selecting the right sampling method is crucial to ensure that the research findings are reliable and valid. It is essential to choose the right sampling method for the research design, the resources available, and the characteristics of the population being studied. Thank you for watching this informative video about sampling methods in research. Thanks for watching. Do like and subscribe.